Katrina here from Scrappy Horses. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Just a little bit of a uh, prelude here to this video. This is very different than most of the videos I've done in the past. So hold on tight, get your heels down and sit deep in the saddle. Don't want anybody getting bucked off during this video. In this video, I'm hoping to share with you my style in putting together a journal page showing my style. And I guess my style is sort of just a hodgepodge of stuff put together with horses because I really love horses. So let's get started. First, my inspiration was this image from Luna Girl. And I will put that uh, link down in the comment section below for you. Now I've got a hodgepodge of things put together and I didn't use all of these things, but I'm just sort of giving you an idea. I've got some metal studs, I have some eyelets, some scraps of paper, tag from blue jeans, some scrap from blue jeans, uh, some wood, burlap, um, just a little bit of everything gathered together in an ice cream lid. I'm going to start by inking up this page. So I'm just taking a sponge with some brown and I believe that color was uh, champagne or cashmere, one or the other. And uh, that's a retired color. I believe it's retired from Close to My Heart. I'll put a link to Close to My Heart in here too if you'd like to find their current inks. Um, now I'm coming in with a chocolate brown. Again, probably a retired color. My idea here is to put in as much um, brown in the background, but not so much that I get it dark and my stamps won't show up. This is also a stamp set from Close to My Heart, and it is also retired. This is actually a belt buckle set, and it's, I believe it's called Lovely, Lovely Buckles, I believe. And I'm going to go ahead and use the belt itself, and then I'm using this belt buckle um, as a piece that I'm going to paste in. So I'm sort of figuring out here how I want this to lay on the page. Now you're going to see in just a little bit that there is something on the other side of this page. Therefore, when I stamp this belt buckle down, it does not stamp very well. But that's okay. I don't panic because I found a way to fix that and you're going to see that. So here it comes. Here comes the big catastrophe, but it's really not a catastrophe. Um, it just, the belt buckle just doesn't stamp well because there are too many layers on the other side. So here it is. You're going to see it. Well, that is if I get that stamp placed down. There it is. Not yet. Now, there it is. Okay, I told you this video was going to be different than anything before because you're kind of getting a chance to see how my brain works. So, there you go. You can see that the stamp did not go clear to the edge of the page. So, I brought in some paper that I had laying on my table, which is coffee stained. Now, if you've never coffee stained paper, it's really easy. You just uh, pour a, a shallow dish of coffee and put paper in it and then just leave it to dry. I actually put mine in the oven and let it dry in the oven. So now I stamped it on and I didn't like the first color. Then I tried the second color and that was too dark. So I decided what I was going to do is use a barn red and then go over that with chocolate. So I've got my barn red. Now I'm coming in with my chocolate. Okay. So I doubled, I'm double dipping here. Okay. And I'm going to stamp that down and that's going to kind of take some of the edge off of my barn red. Barn red to me almost looks brown anyway. So you can see the chocolate there. You can see the cocoa and then you can see the barn red with the chocolate over it. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut that out and um, I'm going to 
through the magic of video here, you're going to see the beginning of this cut and then we're going to jump to the end of the cutting because this is about as exciting as watching paint dry. Now I'm going to come in with a sponge and I'm going to ink around the edge of this belt buckle and that'll just cover up any edges that I have and just give it a little, um, just a little bit of finish to it. However, once I start layering this up, this step didn't really matter that much, but I'm just sort of going along, um, not really knowing at this point where everything is going to lay in this layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink it anyway, and it's just part of my process. So I thought I'd share it with you. So now I'm gonna lay it down. I don't bother to cut the other edge of that because I'm gonna be cutting it off. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't like fussy cutting. So if I can get by without cutting part of it, I'm definitely going to skip it. <laughs> All right, so here I am. I've decided I want my belt to go across this way because this is the way it would actually go into the belt buckle. And uh, now I'm gonna come in and again, you know, I just kind of doing this by hand and then you'll see that I decide that maybe I should have used a block because this is a really long stamp and I'm not really sure how much coverage I'm gonna get, especially knowing that the other size of this paper, the other side of this journal page, has some layering on it. So I decided to grab a long block and just lay it down. I've already laid it on the page, but I thought, you know what, even if it smears a little bit, I don't care because that's my style. My style is kind of rustic and a little bit messy. So when you see projects from me that are very pristine or clean and simple, that's, that's a struggle for me. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a messy crafter, really, in real life. I'm a, a messy crafter. So when you see some of these pieces that are not messy, you can know now, oh, she must have really put thought into that. <laughs> because usually I don't. Usually I just sit down with a bunch of stuff and just start. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm pulling some other stamps and I'm creating a background. I will be honest, I have sort of laid out some pieces just to get an idea of where things might be on the page, but that doesn't mean that's where it's gonna end up at the end. And I'm sure that any of you who do this kind of crafting will agree that sometimes things just end up in other places than where you were gonna put it in the first place. Now, as you watch me stamp in this background, I will share with you what prompted this particular um, project and this YouTube video. Over at Path of Positivity, we are um, talking about our style and our projects were to use images from Luna Girl, which was absolutely no problem for me because they have lots of wonderful vintage Western images. In fact, it, it was just hard for me to choose one was my biggest issue. Um, but as I thought about it, I did my first project at the beginning of the month and I did a card and I decided I, I love working on my journal page and that would really give a great idea as to what my style really is. I taught some classes at our local library and one of my favorite classes that I taught was a class in helping my students determine what their style is. And it was so fun. Oh, let me interrupt here. I'm just taking some distressed medium here and I'm just gluing this belt buckle in and then I'll cut off the edge of it. So that's what's going on here. So going on with my story, as I was teaching this class, I had a great time because the way I did the class is I had 
several long tables set up and I had different stations and they had 30 seconds to go through each station and they had to pick up so many pieces of fabric, so many pieces of lace or burlap or ribbon, um, so many digis, um, so many pieces of pattern paper, so many pieces of just colored paper, and so many embellishments. And I supplied them all with 12 by 12 um, just boards. And these were to create mood boards. And so I told them the rules to this, there were very few rules, but the rules were whatever you take, you have to use on your mood board. As you go through the stations, don't think about why you're picking up what you're picking up. Don't worry about putting it together into something that you will like or dislike. Oh, here you can see the back of this page. Okay, so this is, you can see the different layers and this is why when I stamped before, it may not have stamped exactly perfectly. Okay, so back to my story. Um, I told them, don't worry about whether or not you like what you're picking up. You're gonna pick up what you like. So just pick up what you pick up. Don't think about why you're picking it up, just do it because if it appeals to you, then it should be on your mood board. And that these mood boards would help them to see their style. Well, when they got back to their table with all of their goodies and they have their glue and they have all their stuff, the task at hand was to put it together, much like what I'm doing with this page. And I told them they could rip their papers, they could cut their papers, they could write, they could do whatever they wanted on these mood boards and they could glue in whatever they liked. And it was amazing what these women came up with and what they walked away with. And I did it myself also. And what I did when I made my mood board is I decided I'm gonna work with what's already on my desk that I've worked with from my favorite projects. That way, it sort of put me at a, the same disadvantage they were put at. They you know, had to work with what I gave them while I had to work with what was just on my desk. And I'll show you a picture of my mood board. Um, I'll insert one in this video and you can see what I came up with for my mood board. But I thought doing this video in this style, just letting you watch the way I think, the way I choose things, um, it would be a good idea for, you know, to see my style and get to know my style personality. Um, so here I'm just sticking a little eyelet into this tag. And what you've been watching me do as I told my story about that class is just basically lay out this piece. This is a tag from a, from a pair of jeans or a work jacket that my husband bought at Tractor Supply. I keep all of our blue jean tags, all of our um, Western denim kind of workwear tags because I love to use them in my scrapbooking and journaling. Uh, blue jeans, I have plenty of old torn up blue jeans. I use them as backdrops for photography. I cut them up and use them in my journals or on scrapbook pages. So that's never a problem. I'm bringing in just some kitchen string. This isn't even craft string. This is just kitchen string, just really cheap stuff here. And I'm gonna stick that in to this eyelet and just make it like a tag like you would find at an old country store. And so I just loop it through the tag. I used a crocodile to set that eyelet. I'm going to set this next part of the video um, on a faster speed, just because all I'm doing is laying it out and looking at it 
and um, adding some pieces and deciding, you know, what do I like and what do I not like. This is just a piece of wood veneer and I'm trying to decide where I want to use that because I know I do want to use it. I'm just trying to decide. Um, my grandpa used to do woodworking and uh, I inherited a huge box of wood veneer samples. So I enjoy using those. This is just a scrap of uh, ribbon that I have had forever. And I bought a bag of scraps years ago at a craft store and I've used them on and off. And this one just seemed to be perfect for this. So I'm putting that in. Lots of knots and metal. I'm trying to decide do I want the square one or the round one so I'm kind of setting it off to the side as I'm drumming my fingers there thinking about it and I decided not to make a decision but just to come back in with my distress collage medium and go ahead and start gluing some things into place. Now sometimes I mark things um, just to get a general idea so I don't forget where they were. Sometimes I don't. Um, Sometimes I'll mark just the foundation or the big pieces, and then I'll just kind of slide everything else in around it. Especially in my journal pages, I don't stress too much about this because they're for me and they're, you know, ways for me to document what I'm thinking or what I'm feeling at the time. Um, or, you know, sometimes just for fun, I just do it. It's not even for any reason. I just have something, I, an idea I want to try and see what it looks like. Um, sometimes I'll have an idea for a scrapbook page, but I won't want to commit to a full scrapbook page. So I'll go ahead and do it on a journal page first and then go back and recreate it larger with the materials that I really want to use for that. I'm going to go ahead and add fabric tack. Fab this fabric tack holds a lot. It holds fabric, it holds the wood, it holds a lot of things in place. Um, I decided I wanted to use this quote from um, Louis L'Amour, and uh, so I'm going to use that cocoa ink, that, that really dark ink that I didn't want to use before, and I'm going to go ahead and put this quote in. Again, I'm not going to stick anything underneath here. Sometimes I put some, some of that foam that comes with your stamps, and I put that underneath. You know, I just wasn't that particular about this because I wanted it to have sort of a rough, rugged look. I wanted it to stamp enough that I could read it, but I really didn't care if it stamped very clearly. That was not my goal here. So, you know, I, I thought about it and I thought, well, you know, if I just kind of come around and I press up into that stamp and make sure that everything's getting covered, it'll work and it did so it, it turned out just fine I've inked my uh, focal image now and I'm putting that in place and figuring out where I want the bottom half of that tag that I've already stuck in that's the bottom half of the blue tag it's the other side of it and um, I'm going to come in and put some cereal box underneath there to give it a little more dimension to pop it up off of that wood, but I will only put down the middle section. So here you can see I've, I've got my cornflake box and I'm just gonna cut a strip and not a very thick one and I'm gonna be adhering it straight down the middle of this. Um, I'm gonna use my fabric tack again, putting a little bit of uh, fabric tack on both sides of this. I decided that, you know, just in case that print shows through, which it usually does not, but I thought, you know what, let's not take any chances. Let's go ahead and put the brown side up. And there we are. Now he is going to be adhered right over the top. Um, now, I was telling you about my style and that I have my style of crafting and how it's very rustic and kind of rugged. Um, that's my favorite style. However, this is not my style of riding horses. Not at all. No, no, no. Nay, nay. <laughs> um, I'm a very careful writer. So um, please don't, you know, as you're watching me craft, don't think, wow, she must be some great rodeo writer. No, 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 no. 
I uh, worked in the field of therapeutic horsemanship for years, and all of my horses in my barn were chosen for that purpose. So I have very safe horses out there, very nice boys. Um, they're the kind of horses that I can put my grandgirls on and, and, you know, I walk beside them and they can ride them and um, they're really good boys. So, you know, you see me uh, scrapbook and do all this fun, fun stuff with these crazy images. That, that's not my writing style, not at all. In fact, I do, when my son was showing, he uh, did a lot of Western pleasure showing as well as in hand halter showing and showmanship. Okay, so moving on here, um, I'm just gonna bring a little washi tape in here because I just felt like uh, I needed a little more up in that right hand corner. Now, you might sometimes see me drumming my fingers because I'm thinking, sometimes you might see me drumming my fingers because I'm actually tapping to music I'm listening to. Uh, my style of music as I'm crafting is usually old 70s music. So that probably gives you a pretty good indication as to my age too, huh? All right, so I'm still thinking I need something up in those corners. So you know what? Just sitting there from a project I did a few weeks ago is this barbed wire and I had cut more than I needed. Uh, I had done a card for a Twisted Thursday with a cowboy on it, and so I had this barbed wire left over, and it was just lying there, and I thought, you know what, this will work. This will be perfect. So I went ahead and I got my glue pen out. I started with fabric tack, but it was just, it was too, um, it was just too big to get those little itty bitty pieces of that barbed wire. So I came in with my glue pen and hit those smaller sections so I could get that glued in. All right, again, I'm going to speed up this video because I don't know if I can talk that much. Well, I probably can, but just for the sake of those watching, I'm going to speed it up for you. In addition to working in this journal, which I'm gonna to put together um, with my cinch binding system later on, um, I also enjoy doing faith journaling and I do a lot, of, uh, a lot of that. I also like putting together really small scrapbooks and 12 by 12 scrapbooks. So I think that's a lot of fun too. Um, I'm gonna show you at the end of this, I'm gonna insert a picture of my mood board. You're gonna see that there are a lot of lyrics of songs on my mood board. And yeah, I, I do a lot of uh, journaling to music. So I like using a lot of quotes from um, poetry and also uh, 70s music. So here it is. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about my style and seeing this finished page. Um, again, this is not something like I usually do. So, you know, um, don't expect to see much more like this from me, but I hope you enjoyed it for a change and I hope you'll come back and see what I usually do. If you did like this, you know, let me know in the comments but you can also let me know in the comments if you like a more straightforward video that just teaches a project. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.